So let's take a look at the gyroscope by creating a new Xcode project. Make it a single view application and I'm going to call it gyro. And I'm going to save it on my desktop and that's it. Now, if you have watched my tutorial on how to use the accelerometer, then you will be pretty familiar with the beginning of this because it's much of the same. So first of all, we need to import core motion in order to be able to work with not only the accelerometer as we did in a previous video, but now also the gyro. And then we are going to create our motion manager, which is going to handle all of it. So uh, handle the feedback that we get from the user shaking, turning, twisting the device. So var motion manager is equal to a CM motion manager. And then here, I am going to use create or use the function named view did appear because I only want to start uh, using the gyro when the app is really completely done with launching. And the first thing I'm going to do inside this view did load view did appear function is I am going to change the update interval because if we don't do this, it's just going to spit out lots and lots of data and it's going to happen very fast. So instead of that, I'm going to constrain it to updating each 0.1 seconds because that will be sufficient for my use. So gyro update interval is equal to 0. I want to say 0. 0.2. And then we're going to start getting the data. So motion manager dot start gyro updates. And then we need our completion handler. I'm just going to put it in full screen here and get us some more space. So when each time the gyro updates and we get some new data, we're going to get two new variables. We're going to get uh, our data in this data variable. And when we are going to get an, if we have an error, we're going to get that in our error variable. And here we're simply going to access the current queue. Then inside here, we can use the data any way we like. And the first thing that I like to do is first of all, check if we have some data and if we can use that data. And the way I do that is simply by saying, if let my data, so I'm creating a new uh, let constant and I'm trying to posit the data that we get from each update. And then I'm going to try to print it out just to see how the data looks. So I'm going to say print and what I'm going to print is my data dot rotation rate. So I'm going to print the rotation rate uh, of each in each direction. So we are basically measuring from a from a neutral. If the user has their phone in a neutral uh, position, then we're going to measure the rate of the rotation. So if it flips it backwards or anything like that. So as you can see here, everything is pretty much zero, zero, zero. And then I tilt it away from my face, for example. And as you can see, the variables are being affected. I get four some places, five, seven, minus 15. So all of those different uh, numbers. And right now, they probably won't say you too much. So I'm just going to quickly explain what all of them means. So what X means is if you imagine that you're having a FaceTime conversation, you're pointing the FaceTime camera, camera towards you, you're having the iPhone in a neutral stance. If you rotate it away from you, so you tilt the camera away from you so that it faces the ceiling, that is X that is being affected there, the X um, data number. Then y is affected when you rotate it around uh, its own axis so you're keeping it upright but you're rotating it and then uh, z is affected when you for example tilt it over to landscape mode so when you rotate it that way now what we want to do is we want to check for a certain change in the x coordinate so as you can see, the ranges were between zero and five, minus five and five. So I'm going to say if, for example, this is a way you can use it. If my data dot rotation rate dot X, if that is greater than three, then I'm going to perform a certain action. And in this case, I'm just going to print uh, you tilted your device so that is about that is turning or tilting the device the, the device upwards 
And as you will see, I'm now going to hold my device completely still. And then when I start tilting the device, that uh, function, that print function is going to be called. And that is how you use a gyroscope. You, you choose when it shall react based on which uh, changes and then you perform a certain action. So I'm, not, I'm now going to tilt it away from me. There we go, you tilted your device. I'm going to do it again. You tilted your device. So there we go, I'm tilting my device right now. And if I rotate it around its own axis, it's not doing anything. And also if I turn it into landscape, it's just printing that error. And that's because we aren't listening for that. We're only listening for when the rotation rate, so the X rotation rate, is greater than three. So this is how you use the gyro. It's about finding at which, uh, with which change you want to do something and then setting up an if statement if the rotation rate of X or Y or Z meets a certain criteria, then you want to do something. So that is one of the primary ways of using the gyro. Now, if you enjoyed this video, make sure that you click the subscribe button so that you stay tuned for future videos. And thank you for watching.